Woohoo! Happy Two Piano Tuesday. We're live. Happy Two Piano Tuesday. I am Elizabeth Joy Rowe. I'm Greg and Anderson. We're, <laughs> yeah. And we are so excited to be here live with you. I hope that you are you know, in the mood to celebrate piano artistry and just the fantastic talent that we met last summer at the 2022 Clyburn International Piano Competition. We had the honor of being the on-site competition correspondents. And as a result, we really got close with the action behind the scenes and we got to hear all the compelling stories um, that underlay the competition. And so we are just so excited to be here. Absolutely. We also got to meet these competitors and really get to know them, which uh, ended up being extremely rewarding uh, for both of us. And we hope for you at the end of these presentations. Uh, today's particular show, we're going to talk about competition trends. Uh, as a result of being there throughout the competition, we saw certain uh, ideas kind of come together. Uh, I mean, it was just a really dramatic competition from start to finish. Uh, and for those of you who are, are familiar with the winners, I mean, we produced some incredible winners, but there were so many incredible pianists throughout the competition and so many very special stories. So today, instead of talking about just the winners, they'll be included in today's presentation, but we decided to talk about all of the competitors' uh, actions and, and, and commonalities and juxtapositions. And I'm in particular maybe most excited about this show. So we're really glad you're here. Yes. And we hope that you just say hello from what, wherever you're tuning in in the world. Uh, looks like we have some people from overseas and we're just so excited to be gathering with our fellow pianophiles. Um, the Clyburn <laughs> competition last summer was one of the most epic experiences that we have had the pleasure to be a part of. And, um, you know, even going through and reminiscing about all the incredible performances and just humans that we encountered, um, it, it's just been such a empowering and poignant and moving experience, and but also celebratory. So Greg, I don't know if you have a uh, libation on that. Oh, I do, I do, I do. Since it's a like happy hour, we're, you know, I have some hard apple cider, so we might be extra loopy by the end. But much of this actually has been pre-prepared. We created vignettes, uh, uh, which is kind of showcasing all of these themes. And I think actually, just to give you a taste, let's start with one of them. Yeah. Uh, and, and we'll keep so ourselves on you. the screen for this one. Some of them we're going to get rid of ourselves so you can just watch. Uh, but this first one's just so silly and playful that we thought it would be good just to join you as we watch. Uh, this is a, a short clip called Getting Situated. Some fans of the hair. Yes. The hair, yes. Oh. You look like an artist. Oh, thank you. Right You're yeah, just like Rocky Balboa. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Especially in the coda. Yes. Okay, so good. Yeah. I really love you. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, 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 guys. Okay, so you know who we are. No. Oh. Oh, I'm checking his hair. Well, I, it doesn't look We good. just uh, it looks like you didn't perform. You look <laughs> very put together. Like, yeah. Like, oh, Hard because COVID, like I'm used to talking. No, I know. I'm like this. <laughs> That's all pray, we're and all Ryan help. wants us to be all close. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh don't I I I, I just... <laughs> Song and dance routine with Ilya Schmuckler. <laughs> Bravo. Oh, How are you? So we keep things simple. <laughs> you look very sharp. <laughs> I know, I know. Yay! Yeah. Is everything working over there? <laughs> so oh, yeah the competition so spanned memories. yeah and it spanned 16 days and so we really got to know who these people were not only as musicians but as humans and it really it was i don't know it was fabulous to get to catch them in that vulnerable moment off stage and we also guaranteed that it would be you know not broadcast live so all of the reactions we got were just unfiltered, raw, you know, they're just recovering from the performance. And a lot of times it was just, we could relate to what they were going through. <laughs> exactly. The original plan was actually to have 
more of these interviews make their way into the the live casts as they were happening. But <laughs> having been backstage myself and seen how many different things are going on, it's pure chaos and madness and so exciting. But it was hard for them. They included some, but it was hard for them to like just stay up to date with everything that was going on. Um, so I think this is actually a better way to show all of these interviews because we were able to like kind of bring these commonalities together. Yeah, and for additional context, for those of you who might be just tuning in and don't have the background information of the Clamber competition, this was the 16th edition of the quadrennial professional event. Uh, the Clyburn also does an amateur and now a junior competition. Um, and so this is where you know the real professionals, the budding um, kind of superstars of the piano world come to compete. And there were 30 competitors gathered from all around the world who came to Fort Worth, Texas, which is the home place or the, the birthplace of the great Van Clyburn. Um, and uh, obviously the namesake of the competition. And so we always felt like Van's spirit was hovering <laughs> in the room. And you know he must have felt so proud seeing the just oh, yeah. the phenomenal talent come yeah. through the building. Well, it, it's worth mentioning. It, it might feel really obvious to Liz and me because we have spent so much time there, but this is like the creme de la creme of piano competitions. It's like the Olympics of the piano and not just because of how grueling it is, but because of how competitive, competitive it is. It's really the best of the best are selected after many, um, pre-applications and uh, live rounds that happen before the actual competition takes place. Uh, and the pianists there, any one of them could handle a major career. Uh, and this competition does a, an incredible job of, of finding <laughs> the ones that really can excite and rivet and withstand, rivet an audience and withstand a major touring career. And they, they it's, 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 it, if you haven't watched some of the live streams or some of the competitors you'll get to do through so, through so you'll get to do so through these live streams but you'll also have the opportunity to go watch any of their performances on youtube they're all archived uh for for future viewing and Should what are the on? gifts oh. yeah and one of the gifts of our role was to watch the progression of the artists in terms of them getting comfortable with the audience and with us um, there are four rounds in the competition and things obviously get more intense as it goes along. That said, sometimes the first round has some of the most exciting and intense material. And I think what we're going to see next showcases a lot of the those initial feelings. It sure does. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to add to stream here. This is the, this next video of the vignette. We asked every single competitor after they walked off stage of the first round, uh, how are they feeling? And the results are very varied, <laughs> and you'll see that in this clip. Here we go. You just competed in the Clyburn competition. How do you feel right now? Uh, I feel very good. It's amazing feeling. It's like dream came true. It was great. I was not nervous and very I just enjoyed. I think I'm pretty happy. I, I feel quite quite good. I was totally concentrated. Overwhelmed with gratitude and uh, good emotions. Overwhelming really. It was it, it was un unbelievable. Contrasting palette of emotions right now is just burning me out <laughs> actually. <laughs> but you know, it was something something special for me. So I'm just it's, it's over, I guess. <laughs> How are you feeling right now, just having walked off the stage? Uh, sweaty. <laughs> I feel very sweaty. Sorry, I'm super sweaty. You haven't even been sweating. <laughs> no, I, I, just, I just clean. <laughs> yeah, I clean before, before I come, so that's why you didn't see. No sweat. No, so... Here. <laughs> I'm, I'm honestly exhausted. And you, you can, I mean, you, you can see it. Uh, I, I give it all. Um, uh, usually, I prefer to have performances like this where I, I completely lose it sometimes. Uh, but I'm, I'm giving 110 percent of myself. Yeah. 
once I started Liszt Sonata, like I thought, oh, I started to play. <laughs> oh, I can I cannot escape from this world. So <laughs> I was so nervous. Well, first of all, a bit tired. I feel a little bit tired. Yeah, that was a tough period of my life. This <laughs> this 40 minutes were tough. I was afraid of the fact that I might feel tired, but I think the audience they are so passionate. So somehow I yeah, I have the energy to continue. I am full of energy right now. I can do that again. Really? Yeah. You're so relaxed right now. It's like, you know, I understand that I control everything. I'm not nervous. A bit stressful, especially um, in the beginning. Um, well, honestly, I was very nervous. Really? Effort, yeah, very nervous. It didn't sound like it. Participating in a kind of old age is not it has so much pressure. I think, personally. Yeah. Um. But yeah, still in the moment to feel anything. <laughs> oh, it's done. The first round is done. <laughs> It's a bit relieved. I feel much better than before my performance. <laughs> I'm feeling fine. Not so bad, but not so good. <laughs> comme si, comme ça. Pas tout à fait content de ce que j'ai fait aujourd'hui, mais il y a des bonnes choses, il y a des mauvaises choses, mais bah ok, c'est ça la vie. Well, I, I was really nervous. <laughs> yeah, and I can remember what I did, actually, yeah. So I hope everyone enjoyed that. <laughs> it sounded like they did. Do you remember what it was like before you walked on stage? Oh, no, I cannot. <laughs>
amazing job every round much more so it's incredible well i mean that's a very human response and we've been there where we've just been so distracted or tired or just not feeling 100 percent. so you can play many times i mean you can play 10 times 20 times and after you go on stage and something happens and something could happen i had the problem because this a drop came into my eye and I was like doing something like because I, I couldn't open my eye and I was playing, you know. How are you feeling having just walked off your quarterfinal round recital? Um, well, I, I don't think it went as well as it could have, but um, that is sort of the nature of performances and, and it is what it is and I'll it's it's past my first round um, and this round i think today the exact same alarm went off <gasps> <laughs> like oh literally almost the same time no in the hall in the hall almost oh, the no. same time as my first round even though they were different times but they were both towards the beginning of my program so that was, oh my gosh but you know these uh, again i know these things happen practice with the alarm <laughs> and be like <laughs> If there is somebody really close making some noise, then I cannot hear anything but just this noise. Oh, and that, no. that was the case today. So I was yeah, all the time basically listening to uh, her or his poor attempts to cough, but it didn't really work. I hope she's doing well now. <laughs> that's the part of, of, of the game. No, that's yeah. exactly it. How do you deal with the ups and downs psychologically of events like this? Uh, well, I think it's it's best not to sort of think too far ahead, to take things sort of a step at a time, to accept <clears throat> when certain things happen and um, to know that certain things are out of your control. There is no time to think about how was that. Oh, oh no, I, I wanted to play this phrase more beautifully and, and <laughs> more intonation in that. No, 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 no time for that. I think for the competitors, it's easier for them to just expect that they will not do good in competition no. mm. before they go on stage. Yeah. Because huh. in that sense, they are relaxed. First round was really nervous. And second round was, was fine, but still, little bit nervous but this time what well, a lot of repertoire required so I was just thinking whatever <laughs> <laughs> yeah like, whatever whatever happens happens time flies I'm gonna be done anyways wow. like yeah at some point I'm gonna be done about it at all? Uh, I was a little bit before, but I realized that, you know, being anxious and worrying about stuff, uh, you know, only kind of detracts from your performance. Uh, and so I kind of went on just enjoying the moment, living in the moment, and, you know, whatever happens, happens. And I'm just very glad that I got this opportunity. Oh, you have the right mental fortitude for the competitive environment. <laughs> that true. takes a lot of strength. Toughest is first round because mm, everything was new and then a lot of cameras and so I wasn't used to it. like like what's going on even though there there was um, piano selection time so you you know the, with audience it's completely different so I mean I used to practice only first note when I just uh, go into the piano and then sit and then just first note <laughs> maybe five times <laughs> wow. 
<laughs> just only the first note. This is the most repertoire I think I've ever prepared in such a short amount of time. I'm just so uh, tired. <laughs> yeah, so tired. I mean, uh, very exhausted. And yeah, yeah. it's uh, very stressful indeed. And uh, I think in general, because I didn't have dinner last night, I think I'm a little low in sugar. So that's why I, I got two, two chocolates right now, a banana, and try to fuel, fuel it up. Yeah. What did you prepare specifically today for the performance? That's a good question. <laughs> I don't know if I should answer honestly, but... <laughs> well, I have a fantastic host. So we, we cook a lot, uh, we drink a lot, water, and uh, <laughs> just... <laughs> Usually before the performance, I took a nap. Yeah. And then eat a lot. <laughs> what kind of food? Um, well, anything, well, fruit or well, steak. Today I had a lunch like hamburger. So wow. I didn't eat like the beer for the performance because I can't eat before no. because of like I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> what, okay. In, in addition to feeling relief, what else are you feeling? <laughs> Relieved, and then suddenly oh, nervous oh, again. No. Oh, yeah. yeah. Again. Mm -hmm. Because are you thinking back at everything that you just no, did? No, like or? tomorrow. Oh, yeah. 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 We oh. don't blame you. It's yeah. intense. That's how competitions go. For those of you tuning into Two Pianists Tuesday, welcome. We are so excited to present this special series based on our experiences backstage at Clyburn 2022. Annyeonghaseyo to all of the Korean fans. We love that you're talking in the chat. And I also love this comment because I think Greg and I are feeling the same. Yeah. We want to go back to June of last year. We need more magic. And with all that's going on in our lives and in the world around us, I think there was something so magical about this event. And you can see just, you know, the, the true authentic reactions of the competitors after their performances in that previous vignette and you know quite touching and quite relatable i would say yeah you're saying yeah it's like i want to go back to the music but <laughs> the overall stress levels yeah, in the backstage true. environment maybe isn't somebody somebody would want to spend the entire rest of my life um, yeah. everyone of course was of, of a good nature and and kind and 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 clearly madly in love with what they were doing, and so that energy is an absolute yes. Uh, but that particular uh, vignette reminded me of of many of the frustrations we saw people go through. I mean, it something like competing in the Clyburn means so much to every one of the competitors, uh, and when things don't go the way they want which is, it's really hard to do. Um, I, I, I just, I felt so earnestly and, 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 and so bad for them um, when they were frustrated. But then I also enjoyed, you know, like Dennis Linick there was talking about uh, the coughing and uh, it was an early morning and he was, he was, he was stressed and it, you know, things didn't go the way he liked, but I watched his whole performance twice, once as it happened in real time, but again, while editing these videos and they sound amazing, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I know that's not always the experience we feel as competitors. Oh, or as musicians. I mean, I think all of the musicians out there can attest to this feeling of frustration when you have this ideal vision of what you want to present and what you hear in your head and it doesn't quite come out exactly as you imagine and it's just you know the the challenge of being an artist you know there's like the platonic ideal and what comes out is just reality but you know i think what's also you know something to to be mindful of is that i love how raw and honest they were with their responses because there is something about you know being in a, a competition and you feel like you have to be at your best and be performative and show, you know, put your best foot forward. But, you know, I think they, they're giving us a look into the, just the struggles that happens, you know, when you're trying to, to be in this environment, you're trying to be your best and you're dealing with all sorts of stressors and it's just, it's not a walk in the park. Well, and, you know, we talk about it as being almost unnatural, what is being asked of these pianists, but, Liz and I have spent 
we were 20 years together touring as a duo. And for most of those years, we were doing about 100 concerts, 80 to 100 concerts a year. And those same conditions in a competition exist in the life of a concert That's... pianist. There was one year, there was one week, we went all the way around the world. And in one week, we played in, I think it was, you know, Seattle, then Singapore, then London, then Los Angeles in six days. And you wake up and you don't know where you are or what time it is or even what program you need to play. <laughs> and it, it kind of is like what happens in the competition with these competitors. The the, the circumstances are grueling. You're, you're pulling out new repertoire uh, that you just learned alongside old repertoire and then a whole new program the next day. Um, and, and you don't get to always control the time you go on stage. You don't get to control when the audience coughs. All those things happen in real life in addition right. to competitions. And that is, it's one of the tests that you have to go through in these competitions um, because those skills do serve you as you tour as a concert pianist. That's right. Although arguably the stakes are higher at the Clyburn because you're ranked <laughs> in a way, or, you know, it's like you only get so many chances to perform. And, you know, what I'm hoping is that, you know, no matter what the results are, and of course there were, you know, three incredible medalists, you know, we hope that whatever they do and pursue, that they'll be able to take the lessons from this experience and apply it to their, their performing lives. I just want to acknowledge MK before we move on to our next video. Um, MK asked, you guys, is it live stream? Yes, we are here live with you. All your comments, <laughs> we're reading as they come in. Uh, and you can you can certainly ask questions of us uh, as we go through. It's particularly related to the topics we're discussing. Uh, we'll have four other shows to talk about the finalists and all of the winners. Um, but today we're, we're focusing on the trends we saw throughout the competition. And Liz, are we ready to move on to our next trend? Yes, let's dive into programming. And by this, we mean choosing the repertoire for your competition recitals. And this is a topic of which Greg and I are very passionate and we are definitely mindful with our programming, you know, to, to put together pieces that represent who we are and also what fascinates us at the time and what can connect with our audiences. And um, the competitors have the extra challenge because at the Clyburn, you actually have free um, repertoire choice, which is amazing, but you have to be very canny with, you know, you, you have a limited amount of time. What are you going to show, especially if you're not sure if you're going to advance, what are you going to show, especially in that first round um, that hopefully will allow you to advance, so. And there is, yeah, we'll talk about it after we watch it, but there's a lot of strategy that goes into it. But here is the programming vignette to share. Well, I'm, I'm always uh, very uh, particular about my choice of repertoire because I, uh, it's, it always comes from my desire to play it uh, and to play it at the moment. So it just happened to be that these pieces um, have occurred to me at different moments of my life and uh, came together as a constellation. That's that's very simple. That's the way. I know some of them are kind of obscure, but they are not obscure uh, to, to, to me. So I always felt, you know, it's um, it's interesting to share the discoveries with the, with the audience as well. Yeah. As with all of my programming, it's just a collection of my favorite pieces that I would love to share with the audience. Similar like, you know, you hear a new hit on the radio and you're like, I'm going to tell my friend, you know, he's going <laughs> to love this. Just like that, I think it's the same type of emotions and connections that I'm trying to do. Just when you decide a program is always like what pieces do you feel more uh, connected with your soul and your and what you are and so I just tried of course to give a balanced view of what I, I can be. First of all I, I wanted to play pieces from all periods from all epochs it's just pieces I love and uh, I thought they they're very good together. It's my favorite pieces I always try to play uh, my favorite composers and uh, pieces
every time I think about starting this piece, um, whether it's in the beginning or not, you know, it's it, it always makes me a little bit calmer. In some ways, it wasn't too bad for me to start the program with. It, it calmed me a bit. How did you decide to perform one of your own compositions? Uh, well, uh, it just... Uh... It was a very simple reason for that round. I simply had just enough time. I'm uh, always a little humble to put my, my name within such uh, amazing and beloved composers as Rachmaninoff and Schumann. Uh, so it's a little bit of a responsibility, but uh, I, I felt it's a nice combination. And it, again, it's, an, it's a way to um, share something new, something which hasn't been really heard. The special thing is, I think, the performance order. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mostly, uh, well, people like to end with big pieces, like Prokofiev, for example. But I try to end with Schumann. Yeah. Because the last song of the Schumann is name is uh, the end of song, right? So that's why, yeah, I try to say goodbye to all. Audience. I'm bringing Liz and me on for the end of this, if only because Jin Hyun sits there for an extraordinarily long time. But keep in mind, he had just competed now this three full recital rounds and for him this was his last moment as a soloist in the competition and it was it was a really special moment to behold in in, in person in glorious bath hall i love oh. that the through line for so many of the competitors regarding their programming was love pieces that they love, pieces that they just feel so connected with. And honestly, that is the secret sauce, right? It, for all of us as musicians, we need to find the music that really resonates with us because that's, that's the music that will come across with the most convincing power. You know, it's it's not what's so fantastic about the Clyburn is there's not the rote, you know, play a sonata by Beethoven, play, you know, I don't know, a sonata from this era, or whatever. You you have free choice. So you really get to showcase your personality and your interests as an artist. And many of the competitors did make a clear statement about who they were rather than try and show just a complete balance. Uh, they they focused on the romantic or modern repertoire that really excited them, and and they did very well. Uh, mm -hmm. it, 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 you know, it, 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 I don't think there are any rules. I used to say to Liz, uh, you know, I actually stopped myself doing competitions pretty early, uh, even while I was still at Juilliard. Uh, I stopped doing them because I found I kept trying to play for the judge or play for whatever the rules were. And, and I, I found in myself, I was losing myself in that. And I said to Liz once, you know, I love Rachmaninoff's first piano sonata. I really just want to play that. I can never play that in a competition and get away with that. Uh, and, um, and so, I, you know, I did, I played it and I didn't do the competitions, but then of course I was proven wrong when Vadim Kolodenko uh, <laughs> at the Clyburn competition. Killed it. It was <laughs> yeah, it was that nine years ago uh, when he, he played the Rachmaninoff first piano sonata and won the competition competition mm -hmm. so while i do think there there is some strategy to to how you program and and, and 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 trying to impress the judges in some particular way i think the most important strategy is to really play what you love as many of these competitors were talking about that's right because the audience and the judges can can smell authenticity so easily mm -hmm. and that's what they're going to continue to do beyond the competition right it's it's to play what they really you know, get excited by. And, um, you know, it was just lovely to see the variety and the contrasts and also to speak with, um, to get some insights after the competition. 
But another element that made the 2022 edition of the Clyburn so unforgettable and dramatic, I would say, is the circumstances um, that were in the background. And by that, I mean, you know, the geopolitical situation um, with the war in Ukraine and how that was hovering. Um, you know, it was sort of like this, I would say the competition felt so joyous, but you couldn't ignore what was happening in the world at large. And it was definitely on competitors' mind, minds, and we could tell it showed up in the programming as well. It was a sensitive issue for many to talk about. Uh, just quick summarization, you know, there were several Russian competitors in the competition, and I really admired how the Clyburn uh, decided to handle this because they it was it was a fraught situation but Clyburn himself won the Tchaikovsky competition during the Cold War while in Russia and he was an American and that you know did in some ways many things to thaw some of the tensions and the Clyburn decided that music is something that brings people together um and is an, as an opportunity for us to all share in our collective humanity and we we saw throughout the competition the the Russian competitors as well as the the sole Ukrainian competitor all got along with each other. Um, I, I, I as I understand it, some of the Russians felt uncomfortable talking too much mm -hmm. about what was going on for personal family reasons, but it was something that everyone was thinking about and 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 struggling with on some level. And this next next vignette will show some of that. This is uh, a vignette we call Programming in a Time of War, and it specifically talks about some of the particular repertoire choices these competitors made as a result of current events. Here we go. Oops. This one. Maybe the most interesting resettle program we've heard oh, really? throughout the competition uh -huh. with your clear military theme. Yeah, for this program, it's kind of um, half half, just like I walk off stage. Of course, the first three pieces, it's like the foreshadowing of the war. You played music of the Ukrainian composer Lyatoshinsky. <laughs> I've been in uh, Ukraine like back to 2010, so I think it's quite nice to discover some really, really beautiful yet less played music by a lot of uh, Ukrainian composers. Yeah. And then you did one of the Prokofiev of War sonatas. And the second part is the real war itself. That's interesting that there are not so many Prokofiev 7 this yes. year, yes. and there are four Prokofiev 8. Yeah. Everything is in the world, and uh, it's. I can say that I can feel it very deeply, and I hope uh, that, uh, especially this Prokofiev Sonata, uh, I well, I, I I think that that was the right choice for me, and especially for this time of the year. Just sometimes you're so kind of into the music that you forget, you know, what's going on in the world. And this is kind of me 
at least tackling for myself what doesn't mean to kind of live in a time of war uh, and kind of try to delve into what Prokofiev was thinking at the time, you know, the oppression of the USSR. For me, this particular choice of this piece and also of Chopin's Sonata was my reaction to uh, what's happening and it's connected to war and I think Scrabin predicted a lot of things uh, composing in the year he composed because he, he felt that there is going to be a huge war, uh, the, the first world war. And so I had uh, in uh, the first the, the first bars, the opening, which, which you must not play, you must spell as a magician. For me, this is the sound of falling bombs far away like this and I had this very strong image and this this why I chose this piece I think it's when evil triumphs In today's world situation, uh, yeah, just all the points they were telling me that I have to take this Karimanov of peace because it's nice first and second. I wanted to express some solidarity with Ukraine. I have lots of Russian music in my repertoire. In today's situations, I wanted to balance it somehow with the composer, who has a story actually also quite interesting for today's situation because he's from Crimea and he used to, so he got the um, uh, title Honored Composer of Ukraine when Crimea was part of uh, Ukraine. And he's an author of Crimean anthem. But now Crimea is part of Russia, but it's obviously Ukrainian peace. So it's my uh, harmless attempt to uh, express some solidarity. <sighs> it's a challenging topic, but it it's one of those things that music does a good job of <laughs> uh, yes. and and I really appreciated the the competitors willing to put themselves out there both to talk about it but also to play these pieces that meant so much to them so specifically in that moment in time yeah and when you look at performers on the stage these days um, you know you see people like Igor Levitt people who are just out there being pretty political you know, maybe in the past, people would shy away from sharing views. And I think with social media and also with our multicultural landscape, you see that people are involved and have opinions and, you know, are even activists to some level uh, and, and are using music to uh, kind of share their feelings and, um, you know, just or even trying to reconcile with a lot of the complexity that's happening. Um, around us. And so I think that, yeah, it's risky on a certain level because it's a competition, but I also feel, as you said, Greg, that music fills in where words fail. And, uh, you know, it's a way to kind of promote a sort of unity or solidarity or call for peace or call for harmony um, across borders. And um, so it, it gave this competition an extra gravitas that it I really have did. not witnessed in, in previous editions. Uh, before we move on to our next vignette, I just wanted to acknowledge a couple of the comments that I'm, I'm watching come in. And uh, uh, Libya, Libyana uh, mentioned, sad he always failed on competitions. And, and I believe that was in reference to one of the competitors that uh, Libyana liked and didn't advance. And 
you know, we were talking about challenges of competitions and, and that is just an absolute part of the challenge of competitions. We didn't get yeah. to interview competitors after they found out they hadn't advanced, but I think that that could have been interesting and revealing. Uh, you know, one of the reasons I stopped doing competitions myself was because I found I work so hard to be vulnerable on stage and, and to be just really in touch with my emotions. While at the same time in a competition, you have to have those nerves of steel. Uh, and I could never get the two to reconcile in, in myself, to be sturdy and emotionally strong while accessing my most sensitive inner sides. And, and some people are, I mean, Yunshan is really able to do that, um, to, 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 to be sturdy and strong emotionally while accessing some of the most beautiful facets of humanity. Uh, mm -hmm. But in a competition setting, I, I struggled with that a lot. I have an easier time when there's an audience and the stakes are, are different. But right. I, I, I don't, I, you know, some people just don't have that. Some people are unlucky. You know, it's just, it's different with everyone. So we are going to focus our next vignette on the one requirement for the preliminary round, and that was to play the commissioned work by Sir Stephen Huff, who is one of the great pianists and scholars and humans of our time. Um, he is just cosmopolitan and um, brilliant, and he wrote the sparkling piece for each of the competitors to perform. And we thought it was kind of intriguing to see the performances juxtaposed with each other because the interpretations really varied so much stylistically. Did, but I loved the piece to me. It sounded like rainbows exploding every which way. <laughs> uh, so here's the vignette on the commissioned work, Sir Stephen Huff's Fanfare Toccata. Well, how does it feel to be off the stage and to have opened this entire competition? Well, it's a huge responsibility, first of all, for the competition and, of course, for the commissioned work, yes. which is a uh, world premiere. And I had this uh, opportunity to open uh, the gates uh, to the story. hope that there is going to be a lot of different rendition of, of this particular piece. We are 30 and all our visions are so different. I hope that Stephen won't be so tired after 30th <laughs> time of listening to his own music but it's a splendid piece it's a very very pianistic very exciting uh, to play very risky to play yeah that was a tough period of my life this <laughs> this 40 minutes very tough especially beginning from Stephen Huff when I had some uh, how do you say two seconds memory sleep so the thing is, I didn't know that we're allowed to play it without, uh, so with the square. I, I just didn't check it, apparently. <laughs> One of the few competitors to play the, the Huff from memory, and you only had two months to prepare that. How did you get that ready in time? Well, that was really tough. I mean, there are some things about that piece I think are not immediately noticeably difficult. But upon getting to know it, there are some challenges that I think are really, really hard to overcome. The rhythmic aspect, the sort of clusters, just getting it technically in shape. And then very importantly, sort of the structure. And, and I think it's, it's pretty genius how it's written, but it definitely takes some thinking to get through and, and put it together. It sounded like you've been playing it for your whole life. Ah, so every night with electronic keyboard, I was like, <laughs> he went actually to the same high school that I went to in Cheatham's in Manchester. So he was kind of an 
an idol. I mean, he's an idol everywhere, but there especially. So I always wanted to meet him somehow. So when I had the, the fortune of getting a commission piece written for me, I thought immediately, like, let's see if he would be willing to do it. And thankfully he said yes. It's a, a partita with five movements, which also ends with a toccata. <laughs> Actually, it's quite similar. I was worried that I would start the wrong piece on stage. <laughs> It's just so fun as well. I think it's just very big and bombastic, which is exactly what I like. <laughs>
given what you just went through, are you going to go celebrate right now, or are you going to run back to the practice room to prepare for the next round should you make it? I'm running back to the piano. <laughs> Of course, I will practice uh, today and, uh, and uh, tomorrow. I think I will go to practice. <laughs> <laughs> For now, I'm just curious, like, if, if possibly I get into the next round, like, when we will play, <laughs> I'm just, uh, will, uh, um, but it doesn't help thinking too much of that, so I, I will just practice. <laughs> well, hopefully a little bit more practice later, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I might be again playing on this piano. It's always good to keep these fresh things that I have already, I've just experienced um, and to to try it out pretty much immediately. You're, you're going to watch your performance from just now? Just to, make sure to, okay. to, to, review. to review? Yeah, I will, I will review my performance and then I will figure out if, if it was good or not. <laughs> you are you are like a professional athlete. You know, you want to watch to make sure you have the right form. You have to release into the recording to have an opinion because now I feel quite disastrous, but relieved. Well, I think I'm pretty tired right now. So I think I'm going to definitely drink a lot and maybe take a nap. A good nap. That sounds good. And uh, probably, yeah, start practicing slowly, mentally. Of course, I, I want to celebrate. I mean, the it's done <laughs> just for today like I, I think i lost some weight so i can really I eat whatever <laughs> finished all my solo repertoire oh uh, that's a that's the a hard stuff's out of the way yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i will just delete delete it on my ipad <laughs> <laughs> done any celebrations so far or have you just been practicing practicing but uh today yeah i'm going for dinner with my host family we already made a reservation yeah so i have to go <laughs> I love the reservation because honestly, all I want after performing is to have a really good meal somewhere. So, <laughs> <laughs> but I also just love how all basically everyone was like, "I gotta practice." practice. Yeah, well, it actually, <laughs> I, makes a lot of sense because there's so much repertoire to prepare. So, and there share. really is, and they're very focused. I mean, it's it's a 24-hour job <laughs> for <laughs> three weeks there at the Clyburn. Uh, we're we're about to close out our show i wanted to first mention we have one kind of funny vignette to play here at the end um but i wanted to first mention next week's show because <laughs> it features the three finalists who didn't medal uh vlad clayton and uh Ilya. but the three of them are such fun wild personalities uh that just really stole the interview stage. So uh, editing together the vignettes for that episode has been really fun, very interesting. They're very eloquent and, and very passionate. And we definitely implore you to, to join us next Tuesday at the same time for that particular episode. And yeah. you've been wonderful. We love all the comments and uh, we look forward to continue engaging with you for that show. That's right. So calling all fans of Usladislav Kandoi, Clayton Stevenson and Ilya Schmuckler they will be our spotlight artists next week. But before next we- Tuesday at 8 p.m. Uh, East, Eastern Daylight Time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Is that correct? That's right. <laughs> <Yeah. time. laughs> but before we sign off, we thought we'd share a humorous clip. As we mentioned at the top, the competition happens in Fort Worth, Texas, which is cowboy country. It's got, you know, that Texan hospitality. And uh, for a lot of the competitors, it was their first time, not only in the States, but in Texas, which could be its own country. So, <laughs> so they shared some of their wonderful experiences with their host families and getting a little taste of cowboy culture. Here we go. Mr. Alexander Corsanti, one of my two teachers in EC. Mr. Corsantia also competed in the Clyburn, right? I think in, in, in 93, I believe. So yeah. I'm Just, one more step than him. <laughs> oh, oh, snap. <laughs> no, but did he have any words of advice? Because obviously going through something like this is really grueling. Did he have anything specific in preparation for the Clyburn? He told me to enjoy some Texas steak. <laughs> Okay. I had my first corn dog just like a few days ago. <laughs> it's like, yeah, it's it's been something that I've been seeing all over the media, and finally, <laughs> I'm going to the rodeo. I think. Oh <laughs> yeah! Yesterday, I went to a baseball game for the first time. 
like yeah yesterday? yeah yesterday oh, i liked it really much <laughs> yeah it's like i didn't know the rules even but uh I, my friend explained it to me so what did you eat at the baseball game oh you know i could eat everything there it's like <laughs> i can take everything what i want so i took many things you know mostly enjoying i'm enjoying my time here the most i can and uh, my neighbor is Albert, one of the competitors, and we're having fun, a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, I'm having a great time. I'm having a blast. <laughs> well, we've been having a blast with all of you. Thank you so much for joining today. And we very much look forward to seeing you next week and the subsequent uh, 2 p.m. on Tuesday backstage at Cliver 22 episodes. Uh, thank you so That's much. Right. Thank you for tuning in. Join us next week. And as we mentioned, we will be focusing on the three finalists, three finalists, Uzladislav Kondohi, Clayton Stevenson, and Ilya Schmuckler, all huge personalities on stage and off. So you don't want to miss that. Thank you so much. We're done for the day. Have, have a wonderful evening. And we look forward to next week. <laughs>